Well, hello, set of particle team. I give all praises and honor to the Most High Yah. My name is Keetra Sherelle Yisrael, and we do sister to sister talks and segments here. So uh, we also encourage sisters who are willing and wanting to be restored back to Yah's ways of doing things and becoming the full grown sister. So welcome to part six of the wicked woman versus the righteous woman of the Bible. This will conclude these segments for now, and we may pick up, uh, pick back up, you know, sometime in the future uh, on more of the wicked woman versus the righteous woman segments, y'all willing. So today we'll be uh, talking about Hannah. So let's get into it. So Hannah was only mentioned in uh, and only talked about, as far as I can see, it was in the first couple of uh, chapters in 1 Samuel. Hannah was a woman that Yah has closed up her womb. Hannah wanted children very, very badly. So uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1 verses 1 through 8. Now there was a certain man of Remathaim Zophian of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanai, the son of Jeroham, and that son of Elihu, and that son of Tuhu, and that son of Zuf, and Ephrathite. And he had two wives. The name of one of the wives was Hannah, and the name of the other one was Peninnah. And Peninnah had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto Yah of hosts in Shallow. And the two sons of Eli, which is the priest, and um, his sons were Hophni and Phinehas, and the priests of Yah were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Pinna, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters portions, uh, with portions meaning food or whatever he had, but most of the time it was uh, food or meat. But unto Hannah, he gave worthy portions, for he loved Hannah, but Yah had shut up her womb, and her adversary also provoked her sore, for to make her fret, because Yah had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of Yah, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Alkani, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not, and why is thy heart grieved? Am I not I better to thee than ten sons? So here Elkanai was uh, a worshiper of the Most High and would always worship and sacrifice uh, to Yah Almighty uh, where Ella would be, which was the priest. So <clears throat> when it came time to sacrifice, he would give portions of meat to his wife, uh, Peninnah, and all her sons and daughters. Uh, but Hannah, you know, he gave even more because evidently he loved her uh, so much more and he would give her double portions. So Hannah, though, was always hurt and in sorrow because she could not have any children. I'm sure you all can think of a time when something hurt you, you know, so bad that you wanted something, you know, that you've been wanting something for so long and wanted it to happen so bad and would have liked it to happen. But for some reason, whatever reason, you were not able to have it or you were not able to get it. And it seems as if it was nothing that you could do about it. So, but in this case, after all, this is something natural that a woman is supposed to be able to do and produce, you know, and provide, you know, a child for her husband. So Hannah's uh, rival or adversary, just keep, keep on, keep on making her feel tore down, you know, just not worthy and unworthy, you know, and she probably was thinking, you know, in her mind, these daily, you know what I'm saying? Thinking this way daily. Um, she may have been even jealous of Penina because, you know, she was able to have children with her husband, their husband, you know, that they shared together. Um, but she could not, you know, conceive looking at the, looking at that and looking at children with their parents and looking at Penna with her children, with her husband, you know, it bothered her, you know? 
So, um, but it seems that her husband was not bothered too much about it. I mean, I guess after all, he did have children with Penina. Um, but he was not really worried about it, though. He loved her regardless and even asked, you know, her why was she so upset about it, you know, and worried about it. Basically, you know, am I good enough for you? You know, we don't, ha you know, basically we don't have to have children, you know, we can just love on each other. You know, basically asking, is it, is it, ain't I'm enough? You know, am I enough? So let's continue. First Samuel, um, chapter one, verses nine through 18. So Hannah uh, rose up after they had eaten in shallow and after they had uh, drink. Now Eli the priest sat upon the seat by a post of the temple of Yah. And she was embittered of her soul, Hannah was, and prayed unto Yah and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Yah of hosts, if thy wilt indeed Look on the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thee unto thine handmaid a man child. Then I will give him unto Yah all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass as she continued praying before Yah, and Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Yah, no, my Lord. I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor a strong drink but have poured out my soul before Yah. Count thy not handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the Yah of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her accountant was not no more sad. So, you know, Hannah uh, was grieved. And uh, she was praying to Yah, you know, out of all of the sorrow um, that she was going through and the grief um, that, you know, she's not being able to have children. She prayed and made a vow to Yah, you know, that she would give her son back to him and um, have him serve him all of his days. But Ella the priest thought Hannah was drunk. <laughs> Ella the priest seen Hannah's mouth moving with no words coming out of it and everything, thinking, what in the world is going on with Hannah? Is she drunk? She drinking? <laughs> and spoke to Hannah as if, she w if, as if it was so. Uh, but Hannah was like, uh, no, for your information, I have not, you know, been drinking no liquor, no beer, no wine, nothing. I've been praying to the Most High for my salvation, my deliverance, because I am a troubled woman and I need help. So bump what you talking about. <laughs> I'm sure, you know, that she didn't say it like that. You know, they, you know, you don't speak like that to a priest or anything like that. I'm just, um knowing that she was just trying to let her know, you know, or let the priest know, um, you know, that that was not it, point blank, period. But, you know, I'm just having fun with it, y'all. But, you know, she just spoke her truth. So uh, the priest told her uh, to be at peace and pray and hope she would get what she wanted and everything. So um, that was that. But in this, um, as soon as we start feeling this way, you know, in sorrow and in pain and in and, and down on ourselves, you know, thinking that there's no way out or, you know, you, you may just be crying, you know, every day and all the time, just continually, you know, crying because you're sad. Your soul is sad. You know, um, we need to talk with Yah and pray for healing and speak Yah's word. You know, uh, we need to speak Yah's word as we are talking with him. Say, Yah. You said that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. 
etc. Whatever scripture is relevant to your situation, that is what you need to speak. And so he can know that you are, are saying his words and, and, and praying to him and letting him know that this is what I believe and this is what you say, Yah. You know, hallelujah. All praise is to the most high, Yah. So this is First Samuel um, chapter 1, verses 19 through 28. <clears throat> and they rose up in the morning early, which was her husband, Hannah and her husband, and worshipped before Yah, and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and Yah remembered her. Wherefore, it came to pass, when the time was come after, after Hannah had conceived, that she bare a son, and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of Yah. And the man Elkanah and his house went up to offer unto Yah the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah went not up, for she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned, and then I will bring him, that he may appear before Yah, and there abide forever. And Elkanah, her husband, uh, said unto her, Do what seem that is good, tarry until thou have weaned him, only thy Yah establish his words. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her uh, with three bullocks and one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of Yah in Shallow. And the child was young. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli, the priest. And she said, O oh my Yah, as thy soul liveth, my Yah, I am the woman that stood by thee here, praying unto Yah. For this child I prayed, and thy Yah hath given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to Yah. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to Yah, and he worshipped the Yah, the Lord, thy Yah, there. So finally, finally, y'all, um, Hannah, uh, you know, she got what she dreamed of. She got what she wanted. She prayed, uh, and it came to pass. It came true. Uh, she got pregnant, you know, by her husband. They had their first child together. You know, what a blessing, right? And in this, uh, they gave sacrifice and worship Yah. Um, from what I can see is that the sacrifices were pleasing to Yah because, um, blessings came out of it you know uh, when hannah and her uh, husband gave the sacrifice and also you know giving you know of course the sacrifices and then giving her son um you know and redeeming him giving her son to yah for all the rest of his days of his life uh of his life so that is uh, a wonderful thing you know, she wanted to wait until the baby was weaned. You know how we are as parents. You know, our children are little. And then, you know, she wanted to do that. But she didn't want to let him go. You know, she wanted to, to be able to be a mother to him and finish wean, weaning him and before she sent her son off to be uh, down there with Yah, you know, for the rest of his days. He was going to be serving down there and being away pretty much from them even though they probably would be going down there. But, you know, whatever his assignment was that y'all wanted him to do, he may have been gone or doing this, that, and the other, you know, as he's growing. Um, but um, she was just wanting to, you know, hold on to him for a little bit longer. You know, that's just how we would be as human and human mothers would be. First Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Uh, then Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in you, Yah. In Yah, my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like you, Yah. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our Yah. Don't keep talking so proudly or let your mouth speak such arrogance. For Yah is a Yah who knows, and by him deeds are weighed. The bow of the warriors are broken, but those who stumble are armed with strength. Those who were full hire themselves out of food, out for food. 
uh, but those who are hungry are hungry no more. She who was barren has born seven sons, but she who has had many sons pines away. Verse 6, Yah brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. Yah sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. Hallelujah. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and has them inherit a throne of honor. For the foundation of the earth are thy yahs. On them he had set the world. Verse 9. He will guide the feet of his faithful servants, but the wicked will be silenced in the place of darkness. It is not by strength that one prevails. Those who oppose Yah will be broken. The Most High will thunder from heaven. Yah will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Then Elkanah went home to Ramah, but the boy ministered before Yah unto Eli the priest. So, you know, Yah is saying, you know, not to boast how he takes care of us. You know, he talked about not to boast and how he takes care of us and gives us wisdom in this all. So, Hannah ended up, you know, being blessed again with, you know, more children. She had three more sons and a daughter, you know, as you uh, continue to read, you know, on your own, everything. She continued to have children. So three sons and um, I think two daughters after she gave uh, y'all their first son. So what I take out of this story, which it, you know, as many things to take out of this story is to first always put y'all first and have a close relationship with him so that you can talk to him and pray, you know, pray, worship with him, you know, get used to worshiping in him and with him, praising him, honoring him, exalting him, exalting his holy name, you know, loving him. Pray as for, you know, what you're needing, uh, what you're missing, what you're wanting, you know, all according, you know, to what you want, all according to Yah's word. Um, don't stay in grief. Or sorrow long you know yes you're gonna cry yes cry get things out um, but you will have to move on you will have to pick yourself up and move on uh, doing it too long can kill you y'all okay um, and send you to death so you don't want that you know that's phys and physically because you know how y'all hear about people you know when they have spouses they've been with and their spouse die and then, you know, the other spouse is grieving and sometimes they die right after them. You know, they die right after the other one dies, maybe a month later, two weeks later, six months later, because they're grieving so bad. And they stay in the sorrow because they've been with this person. They love this person. And, you know, it's all they knew, you know. So um, just let Yah, you know, help you and deliver you through your prayers and fasting and also keep his commandments in your face, you know. Just keep them in your face. And speaking of commandments, so my next uh, coming up segment, uh, we will be starting something new, and that is going to be going over the Ten Commandments. That is my plan. Uh, if it is delayed, then you will know uh, simply because I would have uh, started something else or put something else up next week. So, uh, but that will be the next thing on the agenda uh, that I'm planning out. So stay tuned. Y'all know we need to be staying tuned for that. <laughs> okay. So that's the plan is to go ahead and uh, start with the series or the, the segments of the Ten Commandments. Because we need to know, we need to keep them before our face. And I know we know about the Ten Commandments and we know the Ten Commandments. But Yah wants us to keep the commandments and also the statues and laws and things like that but next week uh, my plan is to go over the ten commandments um you know starting with the first commandment so we'll see how um all that pans out but until then um this segment is the end and uh we may revisit the uh wicked versus the righteous woman the wicked woman versus the righteous woman stories at a later date 
um, y'all willing, like I said earlier. So just please like and share and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you will be notified when my next video is coming up. Be well, have a lovely, lovely remainder, and shalom.